Okay, we now move on to part B, where we're asked in part B to find the maximum value of 3 sin x plus 2 cos x all to the power 4. So if we're looking for the maximum value of that, let's just put the max value okay, of, and we'll copy it down as being 3 sin x okay, plus 2 cos x all to the power 4. Okay. Now, we know that this expression in the brackets, okay, we've just seen that it's equivalent to this up here, root 13 sine of bracket x plus 0.588. So, finding the maximum value of this to the power 4 is the same as finding the maximum value of this quantity on the right here to the power 4. Now, the trick to this is that you should realise that if we take the sine of any angle, whether it be in degrees or radians, the sine of any angle will always be a value between minus 1 and 1. Okay? Now, if I'm to get the maximum value of this function, it must be root 13 times the maximum value that this can give, which we've just seen would have to be 1. So the maximum value would be root 13 times 1. So finding the maximum value of this function here to the power 4, okay, would be equal to finding the maximum value, okay, of this thing to the power 4, which, let's just delete that out, sorry about that, is going to end up being then root 13, because that's the maximum value of this, all to the power 4. Okay? Which in turn is going to equal, well, root 13 times root 13 is going to be 13. And if you then square that again, you will get 13 13s, which are 169. Okay? So the maximum value then of that is going to be 169. Alright then, so that's part B done, and we now move into the final stage, part C. So let's just put part C down, and we've got to solve an equation. We've got to solve the equation 3 sine x plus 2 cos x okay, equals 1. And if we're to solve this, then we've got this function back again, we've obviously got to pick up on the first part. All right? So we know that the left hand side here can be, re be rewritten as the square root of 13 okay, times the sine of x plus the alpha. So plus alpha. Now I don't want to use the rounded version, okay, because we've got to give final answers to three decimal places. So I'm just going to essentially put a few more digits on alpha. You may recall it was 0 0.58800 and so on. Okay? And that equals the one on the right hand side here. Okay, the next step then is to divide both sides by root 13 and take the inverse sign of both sides. So that's going to leave me with x plus 0 0.58800 and so on equals the inverse sign of 1 over the square root of 13. Okay? Now then, okay, so where do we go from here? Well, we've got to make sure again that our calculator is in radians mode, okay? And if we take the inverse sine of this, okay, we'll just copy this side down again. We've got x plus 0 0.58800 and so on equals, and if we press the inverse sine of 1 over root 13, you should find that you get 0 0.28103 and so on. Okay? 
And at this point, I feel I want to draw a quadrant diagram, okay, just so that I can explore all the po other possible angles that there could be for this. So I just find room over here, we'll draw a quadrant diagram. Now, we're inversing sine of a positive quantity, 1 over root 13, and sine is positive in the first quadrant, so we go from here to there, and also in the second quadrant, sine is positive. Marking these two angles as being exactly the same size to the horizontal axis, and what we require, okay, is this angle round here, okay, this is a possible x plus 0 0.58800 angle, right? And as it turns out, it's 0 0.28103 radians, okay? So this angle in here is 0 0.28103 and so on radians. Just put a little c there, okay? That's that angle, but I also can have this angle round here. So let's just go round like that to that one. Okay. This 2 is another possible answer for x plus 0 0.588, 0, 0, and so on. Okay, so let's just put a comma here. And to work this one out, it's going to be pi radians take away this little blue angle in here, which is the same as 0 0.28103. Okay, so this answer, this green angle here, is going to be pi minus 0 0.28103 and so on radians. So that's another possibility. Now, looking ahead, okay, the question says solve for uh, x between 0 and 2 pi. So in a minute, I'm going to subtract 0 0.58800 from both sides. And I can see that this angle here is going to be a negative value. And that's going to be out of range. But when I take it away from this angle here, that's going to be in range. But there is also another one that I mustn't forget. I should go round again. I should go round again by another 2 pi radians from this red angle here. Okay, It might appear that it's gone over 2 pi, but in a moment I'm going to be subtracting 0 0.58800 from it, and that will pull it back into range. So if I put a comma here, the next possible answer is going to be 2 pi minus 0 0.28103 and so on. So I hope you understood that. Okay. Now if I take 0 0.58800 from both sides, it's going to leave me now with x equals, okay, this angle here is actually going to turn out to be a negative value, and that's out of range, so I'm going to forget that, okay. But if I work out this, okay, and take away 0 0.58800 from it, okay, what I find that I get is 2.27 two, five, five, okay, and so on. And if I do two pi minus this and take away 0 0.58800, I find that I get 5.9762, and so on. And we're asked to give our answers now to three decimal places, so that means I can wind up the problem and say that to three decimal places I get 2.273 radians, okay, so put a little c there, and I get 5.976 radians, and I'll put here both to 3dp, three decimal places. All right. So I hope you've understood that, and that now brings us to the end then of question number six.